When deep sleep falls on you, there's a world of dreams waiting to be unwrapped. It's a puzzle waiting to be solved, a dream unfolding, a parable of the night. Join us on a journey as we unwrap the mysterious messages found in divinely inspired dreams. This is Dreams Unwrapped. Hello and welcome to Dreams Unwrapped, where we talk about dreams and supernatural events. I have my co-hosts with me today, Sebastian and Tom. We're going to be talking about vehicles and what they mean in dreams. But first, I want to introduce you to our guest, Jill Allen. We are so happy to have you with Thank us, Jill. You. Jill wrote a book called The Fire of Delay, and you might recognize her from her twin sister, who we also have her on the show, Sally Cook. But we are so happy. And amazingly, Jill and Sally both wrote books about delaying and understanding God's time. Yes, yeah. 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 So I'd love to, I'd love for you to share about that and share about your journey. Yes. Thank you. What is great to be here. Um, Last year in September, I recently got married after a long delay um, of bringing this before the Lord about 20 years ago. for God to actually match make me. And um, over this long period of just, of waiting and actually having this kind of learning how to kind of govern my soul in the process, um, I ended up writing about it because it's such a navigating journey. Um, when you're waiting for something, a promise mm-hmm. that you know God has for you and you're ready and your heart's prepared and you're healthy, and you know, you've got good accountability around you and yet it just wasn't happening. And over that period, I said, Lord, I really want this to, to mean something because I know that there is someone for me mm-hmm. um, and there were other opportunities, but then none of them were right. Mm-hmm. Um, and this man who I've married, James Patrick Allen, <laughs> is an amazing man and an absolute match made in heaven. Mm-hmm. And um, everybody who has met him would say say the same thing about the two of us. So this is how the book came about, was really just before, about a year and a half before I met him, I put it down onto paper. And out of that, you know, a month later after I published the book in 2022, I met him. Oh, wow. And, and it's can, been a dream. Yeah. It has been a dream. Uh, so, and yeah. we can all relate to delay. Yeah. And- many aspects of our lives, whether it's marriage or job opportunities, and it's such an important message for yeah. people to hear. Or well, particularly one, which is healing, where people have mm-hmm. um, felt a promise, they know the truth, and yet they still don't see the change. And this is where learning to navigate that is really important because it's connected to the heart yes. and the soul. And I, I worked for a nonprofit, or Connect. We did a lot of work with um, transformation of nations and dealing with systemic poverty globally in cities and nations. And yet in Proverbs um, 1632, it actually says, you know, great is he who govern his own soul than he can take a city. So I thought, wow, that is a really significant yes. thing to learn to navigate. You know, I'm working with all this city and nation transformation. And yet this is the hardest thing. Yeah. So I really gleaned wow. that opportunity from Delay. Wow. Mm. Heart change, yeah. heart yeah. change, it yeah. starts with us yeah. first. Yeah. So I, um, you had such an interesting dream that yes. we were all really excited to hear about. So will you share that with us, your dream with us? Yes, well, I had the dream at the very beginning of the year. And um, in this dream, I am, this starts pretty much off with me walking through a garden, um, which is kind of overgrown and there's bushes and kind of brambles and I'm walking through and I know I'm going to get my car. And my car is actually in a wooden shipping crate somewhere through this um, garden. It was very easy to navigate it, got through. I had a code to get into the car that had been crated up and I was easily able to access the car and to get into it and I was able to drive off. But I knew it was my car and I knew I had driven it in the past. There weren't any details about the car as such, other than it was my car and it was a normal car. But there were also little cars in the dream that a child would drive. You know, there were little um, plastic practice, practice ones, but they were real cars, but they were for others, but they were little, they were very, very small. And so that's the main part of the dream that it, I woke up feeling, wow, that was a really smooth journey. 
Um, so yes, that's such a fantastic dream. As we were looking at the dream, what I was um, seeing is that, uh, you know, the, there's a timing right now where what's been um, waiting, the, what's been long time waiting, you know, you're you're at a time right now where it's your what's been stored away is uh, your what whatever you're gonna do in your destiny and and mm -hmm. in life. Right. Um, it's you're about ready to. It's time for you to step into it. And although it's been sitting there created away, uh, you're gonna have the the ability now to. It's timing the ability just to step into it. And uh, you're gonna have also like, you know, you have the code to get in there that there's no need to tear anything down, open mm -hmm. something up, or like a crate, you would in a crate, but you have whatever you need is ready to access and step into it. And mm -hmm. that's, yeah, yeah that's the um, portion I'm getting from that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, going back to that code to get in, I think that the there's a significance about the code, but there's also significance that it was in a garden. Mm -hmm. And I just really sense that, that God's bringing you this on this journey within the secret place. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really about God giving you this time to go into this garden with him. Mm -hmm. And it's like, as you seek the Lord, he's gonna bring about um, the journey and the calling, but it, you have to find it and you find it through him. Mm. And um, the smaller cars, I think, are really significant um, in terms of other people that you're you're also helping on their journey. So your car is the main car. It's um, often cars are representative of the journey that God's taking you on your destiny. And so the little cars are people that you're going to be called to work with that um, that have a destiny, but they're also people that that have something similar to you. They're also right. on a journey, right. and they're also in a journey in the secret place yeah. too. Yeah. Wow, interesting. Yeah, I like to add um, about the crate, the whole deal. There's, you've been, there has been a long transition. Because when you create a car to be shipped, it's not something that you move, like, it's a long transition. So you're coming out of a long transition where you were not able to do something. Now God's releasing you to go forward. And the code is you're, you're being given the authority, the permission, you know, to use it. Mm -hmm. So you're being released. Yeah. More long, like, you know, <clears throat> transition. That's fascinating. Yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. What do you, um, you know, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts that, that came to you as you were looking at the dream and what you felt like yeah. it meant to you or what God was saying to you as you had it. Yeah. Well, actually just listening to all three of you, um, I can resonate with everything you're saying. Um, 14 years ago, I came out of having my own company, a Pilates company in Thailand. Um, and I was kind of entrepreneurial in a lot of things that I was doing. And then since then, 2010, I have been, um, you know, my skills, my work, been working for others mm -hmm. um, in nonprofit, et cetera, mm -hmm. and loved it. It's been wonderful um, on a global scale, but literally in December, the very, very end of December, I agreed with James to go into business with him wow. and for us to start entrepreneurially. Mm -hmm. um, we are this month actually starting um, a coaching company mm -hmm. on health and wellness, which mm -hmm. is what both of us have our expertise in. And um, I'm writing a book on the practices of divine health and really kind of mm -hmm. opening up this area where I was in the health industry um, and going back into it. So. The fact that it's been created up for a long time mm -hmm. literally signifies wow. that it's 14 years. Mm -hmm. But also it's been very smooth, very easy. It's been like come very naturally um, with my marriage to James and the fact that we're both gifted in the same area and expertise in the same area, but really passionate mm -hmm. about this in the same area. Yeah. So it does make a lot of sense about those that we will be helping. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it has been a heart journey because there's been a number of skills that I've accrued over the years where it's just perfect, mm -hmm. um, even as an image consultant, to do this for others mm -hmm. and help others. 
um, and yet my skills have been mainly used to um, for working, uh, you know, in administration mm -hmm. and organizing global events. Right. So I've, every now and then I've had this inner struggle yeah. in the heart space right. of, is this really my calling? Because I felt um, I've really loved it, I've really enjoyed it, but not necessarily felt fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Whereas when it comes to health, it's literally only been this last month, I am more and more excited, wired and passionate, and it's just smooth. It's, it's just there, it's been in me from, mm -hmm. you know, very, very early on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think often we forget that ministry is to the whole person mm -hmm. and we, you know, we minister to the spirit, but but the soul is the whole person, our mind, our bodies. And that health aspect yeah. is really a major part of yeah. our spiritual life. We yeah. can't separate them yeah. from each other. Um, you know, also interesting that your, your dream took place in a garden, which yes. also health and wellness, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, being in a garden and I love to garden. so. I, I plant food and growing vegetables and that really signifies health to yeah. me as well. So I could see how that detail could be part of that connection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah I've often um, felt, you know, when you kind of look at the different areas and you've tried to kind of summarize the area where you feel um, the calling of the Lord upon your life. And I have about 20 years ago, I just knew that what God had called me into was all connected to alignment mm -hmm. because of the sports therapy and the spinal work I do with mm -hmm. Pilates um, and movement. Wow. So although that can be, you know, um, translated into, you know, administration and the work I was doing with events and things like that globally, mm -hmm. um, and even ministry, the real passion has been physical and mm -hmm. to bring the body, soul, spirit together, yes. connecting that all together. Yes. So yes. You're speaking so my language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking Honestly. my language. Yes. Yeah, what do you guys, um, do you guys have any more feedback that you want to share? And you know, how, how do you sense the Lord asking Jill to apply the stream or where, are there any other applications that you guys are seeing? I am kind of reminded of one of my mentors used to tell us when when you're doing what you're created to do, the energy you receive is greater than the energy expended. So I really feel like this in your this garden and within the garden of your heart that this uh, this you've carried this passion for a long time, and and um, I believe that when you when you begin to step into it, you're going to see God backing you up with so much energy. You you'll you'll be going on like the what's that the the, ra the rabbit and the battery. Uh, yeah, the energizer, energizer, energizer bunny. bunny. Yeah. I have been nicknamed that. You are. Oh. you are, both of you, both of you. So I really feel like you're just gonna have so much energy propelling you both as you work together. And um, like like you said, it's been so many years and you know, the garden's gotten really high and you're going through there. So it mm -hmm. speaks of not only the long duration of time, but but also like um, <clears throat> the fruitfulness it's gonna be too. It's it's mature, right. mature time. It's not like a small garden, but it's up there. So I really wanna encourage you in that just to just be uh, faith expectant that God's gonna propel you, energize you. Also, I wanna add like, you know, how the whole dream is how smooth it was easy for you to get to the car and drive out. So I think it's talking about how it's it's going to be easy for you to transition out as from this previous transition. So yeah, it's it's, it's good. Thank you. That's really good. Well, we would love to bless you and pray for you. Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, why don't you start us off? So. Okay, um, Father, we just thank you for the plans and purposes you have uh, for her and her husband, Jill. Uh, and her husband to prosper them and not to harm them, to give them a future and a hope. And we thank you that uh, you're going to be there with them uh, and helping them uh, carry it out, your purposes and plans. And um, we just bless them both. We bless them with, uh, with faith. We pray for favor from men and from above, from God and from men. We just pray for the doors of opportunity and favor just to be laid out open uh, supernaturally, just uh, 
almost like coming upon them out of nowhere, like this favor of God. And we just pray that you just smother them with favor. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Mm. Yes. Um, what I, I see a picture where um, I see you driving the big car and these, uh, you know, the, the small cars are following you like a little train. So mm. you're in the lead and showing people how to do this. So uh, teaching the way of alignment of spine and uh, spiritually, you know, giving strength. Wow. So spiritually, physically. So um, I bless you in this journey. I, I pray that um, you be the prototype for others and that show that um, how they can follow your path and grow up and you know, and also there's a the holistic principle of just um, give, giving people strong backs, literally mm -hmm. and, and you know and spiritually. So uh, bless you in that and I pray that um, yeah, just be a role model again to these people. So thank you. I see order also. I keep hearing that order coming through. Um, as yeah, that resonated with me, Sebastian, that kind of train happening. And I also, in addition to that, just saw that there was an order to things. So, um, Lord, I just thank you that you are a God of order. And that even when Jill and James have questions and they aren't sure what, what step to take first, that you have ordered their steps that you are divinely organizing for them, that you're divinely putting strategy to what is next for them. So I pray just that you would bless them with more dreams, that you'd bless them with yes. words and understanding of what, what this first step is to take or what is next for them, God. And I, um, I keep saying, seeing for me, like corporate, corporate formations. I saw paperwork for an LLC um, forming, but I also see multiple LLCs happening as well. And so I just bless each project that is going to be coming from both of them. Lord, I pray for the financial means to do the things that they've been called to do. Lord, and I pray that you would continue to provide for them even now as they're going through the process of building, Lord, and that it wouldn't just be, they wouldn't have to wait for provision until everything is built, but mm -hmm. the provision will come now, Lord. And so we just um, thank you so much for the blessing that you are pouring out. Thank you that you speak in dreams. And mm -hmm. we just... Um, we're just so grateful that you want to engage with us in this way. In your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Uh, one more I want to add. Um, just like Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. So I'm safe, same thing to you. As you lead your train of uh, you know, followers, yeah. that you live a life. So I bless you in living a life and being an example. And uh, I think we're all ambassadors of Christ and you represent Christ. So it's awesome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. This was such an interesting dream and perfect opportunity to talk about what vehicles mean in dreams. I think what was significantly interesting about Jill's dream is that I've never seen a dream, like I mentioned, with multiple cars or with, with little cars. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd love to hear you guys' teaching feedback about, about what vehicles represent in dreams. Uh, like the metaphor of a vehicle or a car can be um, in different size, shapes, and types. Like you can have like uh, you know um, <clears throat> high-speed classical cars, old classic cars. You can have um, school buses, or even even a train can fit in there because it's a vehicle of transportation. But like. Or even planes, right? Yeah, right. planes right. too. Right. And Helicopters. Too. What was interesting about hers is that we we she, it was in a crate, mm -hmm. and we've had metaphors of vehicles sitting in garages. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're not Very moving. Cool. They're not. They're at, at an idle's place in time, and it's not. Maybe they're at rest. So, so oftentimes, like what we learned in that in the, in the metaphor of a vehicle, it's the thing that uh, enables you to reach your destination. Mm -hmm. And it can also be um, uh, a metaphor of, of your what it, your type of work you're involved in, your vocation, or 
Right. So a, a vocation um, that, you know, someone that were, someone that was managing a church or a large corporation might have a dream with a bus or an airplane, mainly because the vehicle is carrying multiple people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in this dream, it was one car, it was a passenger car. And so it, it kind of told us that the size of, of the projects that she's going to be working on were, were not massive projects, mm -hmm. but they, you know, the little cars actually told us that there were, would be their each own, each little car would have its own, um, identity, but right. she was still managing those two, I think bringing up the crate, you know, when we think about metaphors, we think about the function. Yeah. When we're interpreting symbols, we first want to look at, you know, what does that symbol mean to the dreamer, first and foremost? Mm -hmm. Because um, God speaks in our dream language. And then we want to look at what, what the Bible says about that symbol. And then we want to look at what its function is naturally. So, you know, functionality of that those cars naturally and the function of the car being in a crate is really important to look at in its context. Um, yep. Crates are used for shipment mm -hmm. and not necessarily for storage, but, but you know, it's, it kind of t said to me that, that it was going from one place to another. There was a shift. A long journey. Yeah. A long journey, yeah. long journey. And wasn't she in another country prior to Getting about getting married, right. so she there's well, she was in another city, of, <laughs> she was in okay. the Northern California. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would ha I had dreams where I would have a park car, and so this is like that's short. And I remember getting a ticket because I didn't move my car. This was created where like it was on purpose, on intentional, so it's nothing negative. It's like okay, it's being it's prepared to be shipped or it's been shipped. So it's a positive thing and it was a, a long journey versus like I said, park car means you were there maybe overnight. Mm -hmm. This is like long term. Mm -hmm. And the code too, I mean that, you know, codes are for individuals. When mm -hmm. we think about codes, they're, um, you need a passcode and only one, very few people have the code to get in. So it's, it also speaks to whatever this was, was just for her because she, like God was giving her the code mm -hmm. and nobody else. Yeah. Well, we could, we could pick so many things to talk about within the stream, but, but what a rich testimony of God just wanting to speak to her and, and setting her off in her next journey. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Faith Frankenfield, and we have our cast, Sebastian Son and Tom Schwabe, and we are so blessed to be able to be a part of this journey. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.